everybody and welcome. I'm Visible Lady of Faith. Did I say invisible or visible? Hi everybody and welcome. I'm Visible Lady of Faith coming to you with a... No, I'm not coming. Pastor Scott is coming to you with a summary of the Sunday School lesson entitled Jacob Call Israel for Sunday, September the 18th, 2022. Hello, how you doing? Uh, I'm standing in for the Visible Lady of Faith. Uh, it's the third Sunday, Sunday School lesson, uh, Jacob Call Israel. Uh, you know, it's, you know, the, the Sunday School, it's a familiar one. I've seen this several times, but those that haven't, it says, uh, it's kind of like this. Uh, the night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, which is Jacob, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name, Jacob? He answered. Then the man said, Your name will, will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place, a penal saying, and because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Then the sun rose above him as he passed Pentacle and Penal and was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendons attached to the sockets of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Good morning. Hello. Uh, this is the third Sunday uh, of this month, and uh, Visible Lady of Faith, which is my wife, the beautiful wife of mine, uh, she gave me an opportunity. So first thing I want to do is apologize to everyone for this being late, I have to reshoot it because uh, it sounded like I was a little incoherent. But anyway, let's all bow our heads. Father God, help me to stay focused. And so one can learn something from the times I want to share about Jacob called Israel. Uh, also, too, it is, touch us all as teachers and students to open our minds and listen to the word you have left here for us. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Uh, the lesson, Jacob called Israel. Uh, it's, this is the, uh, the first thing I want to do that, you know, I decided to use the background. Uh, the artist's name is... Uh, do the man, and I hope I got that correct. So I like to give credit where credit's due. And you also notice that the the, the rendition, this particular artist, he, it's obvious he's, well, I wouldn't say I've never met the person, but it's a black version. And uh, it's just different artists. It's the standard one is, I did a little search, I think his name was, I, I, I don't want to mention it. I, I looked it up, but I forgot the name, so I'm not really great with names. So, uh, and hopefully it doesn't come off excuses, just that I'm just trying to share with you that I've said in previous videos with, uh, with my relationship being so long with uh, the wife, that our success is trusting God. And we have four beautiful children, and I'm a minister, and my dad, we didn't turn out so bad, so I'm proud of my siblings, and I'm proud of my children. And we spend times as ministers with our own children. But anyway... Uh, getting into the lesson, uh, Jacob. Jacob is an interesting character. And the reason why I want to point this out because Jacob has his past issues. And you can see he wrestled with this man. Some say it's a man, an angel, he wrestled with God. But, you know, we, we wrestle with our own demons, if I say it that way. Jacob had a lot. Jacob is a trickster. Jacob, uh, you know, the incidents that he got into, the first thing is 
he saw an opportunity when Esau came back from hunting, and he said, uh, wow, he said he's about to die, so what's the point? He traded his um, birthright for some food, uh, some stew. So Esau, you know, you kind of say, you've been out hunting, what's the probability he was going to die? Yeah, he made it back there, he said he was famished, he says, I'm about to die. So Jacob took uh, advantage of that situation, so he uh, took his birthright. Uh, I promised him to do that. The other, when it came down for uh, that birthright, and keep in mind, uh, Rachel was was he uh, she was childbearing. She had a uh, had the the twins when she was about thirty four. And you know the fascinating thing is she went to God, so God was talking to her too. But keep in mind. Bring these things up, dysfunctional things in our family. We're not so proud to talk about because our family got their issues. So if you think that I'm going to sit here and say, oh, I'm a minister when everything is fine. We don't do anything wrong. <laughs> we have all human beings have their issues. Uh, there's some that's very devoted. They, uh, they may cover it up, but I'm not trying to cover it up. I found success in my career to be honest with people. But be wise like Solomon, you know, how you volunteer information to other human beings because they like to take it and hold it against you. So anyway, uh, Jacob also, his little trickster, uh, he was kind of skeptical at first, but his mom is Demon, you know, uh, Rachel, she says, uh, God told me that the the older was going to serve the younger. So I don't know all the things was going through Rachel's mind because I had a tough time with Rachel uh, uh, being who she is. I said, why in the world God's going to work with this woman? It's deceitful. But, you know, everything is not described in the in the Bible as we would like it to be black and white. But but it is kind of. We just walk with God. We're going to make mistakes. But our hearts is right. I believe Isaac, Jacob, Esau did all the best that they could. And you're on Rachel. And let's give credit to the women. They played their parts in the Bible, but we're not going to get into that. That's the way society is. Well, anyway, Jacob went along with his mom and made out to be like Esau. And even though Isaac was sitting there saying, you're the voice of Jacob, but you feel like Esau. <laughs> so, again, he's involved in trickster. Then here we have the, the setting you know, of today, where Jacob now, uh, well, going back when after he deceived his brother, him and his mother, he had to head off to uh, Laban, which is Rachel's uh, brother, which is his uncle. And <laughs> uh, as he's getting out of town, because his mom says, you got to get out of Dodge because your brother is angry. He says, you got to go, uh, you got to head, uh, head to my uncle, and, and lay low there until your brother cools off. Yeah, he was a little upset, and he said he was going to kill it because he was upset that he couldn't get his blessing. But you got to remember, Esau sold it uh, right. He didn't tell his dad, I sold my birthright, but now I want it back because I'm alive, and, and, and I need it. He's more mature now. But uh, God works with all of us. As Jacob was down there with his uncle, his uncle was a trickster too in the sly fox. And also, if you dig in, matter of fact, read from Genesis 29 all the way through the 32nd chapter. You can read more outside it, but anyway, this is what I'm talking about. You'll find all these little nuggets all in here. It's an interesting, you know, stories. So, anyway, uh, you know, about Leah, he said, man, he fell in love with, with uh, Rachel, and the uncle pulled a fast one on him, and after seven years working hard uh, uh, with, um, you know, trying to get Rachel because he was in love. And keep in mind, this is weird in today's society. Uh, uh, Jacob was down there marrying his cousins. <laughs> Just like like uh, Isaac, his dad. He, he, uh, he married his cousin's daughter, you know. And, you know, and the funny thing is, that's how we are in society. In society. But... You got to remember, this is the lineage through, from, if you go and read uh, Luke, the third chapter, you see from God being the father of Adam, and you can see Adam be God, blah, 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 all the way, all the way to Jesus Christ. 
read it, but start at the last verse in that chapter and look at it and go backwards. And if you need to write it down, write it down. You'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, the these are just showing you the proof that Jacob's a little bit of trickery. He's he's been dealing with mankind. He also has a conscience because the conscience proved that oh, I, I, I don't want to, you know, upset my dad, you know, Isaac, and he cursed me, and so he's he's real in tune. And keep in mind, at this time they didn't have cell phones and all this stuff and educated and and we're saying, yeah, we're just more educated and wise. And you can imagine they didn't have all the electronics. They lived longer. And they were connected, you know, with God. So this is, we're coming to this lesson where where uh, all these tricksters that between Laban and Jacob, you know, the seven years, I don't know, at least 21 years. I, I didn't find out what, how many years he was down there, but I forgot what that was. Well, at least more than 21 years. Uh, they, they've been tricking each other. And finally, God said, okay, you learn being duped by your uncle. And now you're seeing how I feel. But God was working with Jacob all while he was down there all these years. And getting his head right to do his part in this lineage all the way to Jesus Christ. Now, <laughs> uh, he's been in school. You also you remember, I remember the years with Moses. He had to be schooled after he murdered the, the Egyptian and, and had to go off for 40 years and get educated. So God is educating us through our lives. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, now in this lesson here, Jacob, now he's, he's dealing what he's done with humans and he's dealing where he's, he fell, he fell short with, with God. So now you can see that he feels it's an angel, man or God. And, and you can see as you, we read through the Sunday school lesson that, that Jacob, um, you know, he had to get things set straight. And again, I wonder if I didn't say it, he's getting it straight because now his conscience, his guilt, what he went through with his uncle Laban, and he had to tip out at night and get away from Laban. And God, fortunately enough, he was speaking to both uh, Laban and Jacob because he was educating the both of them. Because when he slipped out at night, you know, Laban went and pursued him. So now he's got his uncle coming a little upset because uh, the, the, the deal that Jacob got, he got most of the wealth. And everybody in the family just, you know, Laban's family said, man, Jacob, you made out. Yeah, but God was blessing Jacob for uh, what he was doing. And also God was talking to Laban and telling him that he's going to be a blessing. But it's kind of like the, the golden goose, you know, that story that laid the golden eggs. And he wanted, he wanted the goose, which was Jacob. And he wanted to keep Jacob there because he just loved all those blessings he was getting because Jacob was there. So he won his golden goose back. So, anyway, uh, as he, he was trying to catch up, and then Jacob said, Mm, Laban behind me, Esau in front of me. When he wants to kill me, he probably wants to get me too. So, God, I need a blessing. I need help. You know, we got to set things straight here. So God spoke to Laban and said, Back off. That was all taken care of. And he, and, and going to, to the thing... Uh, when he finally met his brother, just to make that point too, everything was all settled because God took care of it. Now that's been said. Basically, sit there and look at the, the systems and everything that uh, that I spoke of. But also too, uh, keep in mind with our own children, our estates. Uh, you know, people make an assumption that you know that this inheritance that we read, we sit in the churches and we we sit here and think about. Um, that, you know, it automatically comes. No, we live in a different time. So this inheritance that was accustomed in here, but now we have laws that we have wills, we have estates, and things of that nature. So I say all fellow Christians of all, all that do not know, get your wills, get things in order, make sure your children are okay. It's not just all about your big church. Yes, they are your your Christian family, but your immediate family is very, very, very important to you because if you keep eroding the foundation of our families, how in the world did the church, uh, the house of God is going to get stronger if our families are weak? I want to say that again. How can the foundation of, of Christianity be strong 
if our families are weak. Because those are the families that are going to church. And to make those services great and spiritual. And we should be wise about that. And the leaders of the churches should make sure your flock is taken care like God wants them to. So I just want to say, it says, uh, pronouncing a blessing or benediction upon our children is a powerful way to plead for God's grace upon them and give them a vision for what we hope they will become. So I just wanted to share those few words, you know, fathers, uh, uh, you know, do that. But again, I want to reiterate, make sure our state, no matter what it is, a will, whatever, uh, one of the things that myself personally, maybe financial, you know, there's there's a group of lawyers, uh, you know, you can look out there and find it and do it online. You can look around and see what kind of things you just got to start looking. You'll find something that you can afford, but get it done as opposed to losing a lot of money going into probate. And make a long story short, uh, my father did not do that, and we went through quite a bit as the siblings, and uh, didn't end well for the lawyers that was handling it. Uh, they, the lawyers, they ended up taking the estate, and which is not good because you know we as the family could have built a stronger estate. But uh, thank God that. That incident, again, taught. So I went and have a living trust in moving everything in the legals because I do not want my children to have to deal with these judges. And one other thing, uh, our relationship, you know, just like Jacob here, he struggled with his relationship with God because he struggled with this man slash angel slash God uh, that he wrestled with him all night because, you know, the his socket, his hip, the limp that he received from fighting with him all night. And the angel, the man slash God, said, release me, you know, uh, daybreak. His, and uh, he wrestled. So hopefully that you can see in there, we're struggling with all kinds. We may have a child that's addicted or a mental health something or dealing with grades and disappointed with a child. You wish your child was like some. In other words, a struggle in our lives, in our spirit. And we wonder if we are Christian it just goes on and on and on. Very similar to Jacob, Jacob's, uh, the way he felt. Now, we need to just stop and think and pray and trust God. It really is simple. It took me a few years, just, just like everybody else. But I want to encourage you, each one, to sit down. And if you're trying to do your best every day, that's a good sign that you are a child of God. And, we, and speaking in this tongue, going to a certain church, all these things here, it just divides us as Christians. Yes, I was raised as a Baptist, but also, too, uh, parents says we wanted a better version of themselves, so I'm trying. I want to sit here and trust God. I'm trying. I, I, I'm going to keep trying and trying and being honest with whoever in the world I talk to. And, and the thing is, that's what God wants. Because if it wasn't so, I wouldn't be able to sit here in my right mind. Yes, I got some, you know, health challenges. Guys, you over seventy years old. Of course, you're getting older. Uh, but the spirit is still high. I still trust God, and this is where, you know, the you know when you finally get past and finally God had blessed him and set Esau right in Jacob's mind, and also set the bond and found he felt safe. Now Jacob. Start living more of his life. So as we keep going, you know, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And the reason why that, you all know, because a great nation is going to be raised up out of Egypt called Israel. And then plus this day, uh, Israel is still is a power to be reckoned with. was Israel. But Esau, which sold his birthright, which is the weaker today, the Edom, uh, in my research, I couldn't find out where. Edom is, uh, uh, you know, it's the southern border of, of Israel, but it's kind of wasteland. It's not, it's not a force like Israel. Now we sit here and look at Israel. Uh, my opinion, whoop, my opinion, Israel has some has some dealings with God to get their act straight too. Uh, and you know, if my if my uh, my Jewish friends, please don't take anything personal, but I'm watching from the outside. I don't know all the things that uh, Judaism, I don't, uh, I have an idea what Judaism, you know, is, but uh, but still, 
let's just look at the human beings and look at what's going on because some of the politics in Israel and now here in the United States is not looking good for us. Not at all. This this country's in trouble because this is not God is not the author of confusion. So it won't. I, I'm not going to say who did what because I I do not have the right to judge no one, no one. I don't have that authority because I did not make a heaven or a hell. I can't create nothing. God can create something out of nothing. I can't. I can't do any of these things. So. Uh, just, just imagine, I am talking about the creator of this universe, the trees, everything around us, the ants, all of us. And the funny thing about it, my brothers and sisters of all shades of different uh, skins, the black, the white, the red, wh wh whatever color you want to classify yourself, uh, I, I, I just want to make sure that the body of Christ, those that's with God, he wants his children that wants to do the right thing every day, make the right decision. So let's be one of those. Uh, sit down and listen to anything. I guess you want to call you liberal. It, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we do know the difference in right, what's right and wrong. We want to play our politics? That, no. Only politics I want to play is is, is God. How, how can I get up there? And the only way I can play those politics is being honest with God being analyst, honest and loving to each one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. So, anyway, this I hope be that you you get something from this. And, uh, and, and again, I want to reiterate, here on earth, this, this is a tradition of, this, of the cultures of the Middle East. And so here, we, we feel that way, especially in, in my community, seeing as a black man, we think, obviously, it's going to come to you. No. When you go into probate, you got to deal with the law of the land, whatever state you're in, whatever country. The laws over this this tradition, you know, over rules this tradition. So, anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, as my wife said, like, subscribe. Now, let's have a conversation. Uh, if there's something that that I misspoke on, please let me know, and we can talk about it. And again, I apologize for this being a little late. Hope we get it out today. And look at it briefly, and uh, and we'll be fine. Anyway, thank you for t taking the time to listen.